Our presentation is Sonics Aircraft and Aero Conversions Products. Our presenter today is Mark Scheibel, owner and president of Sonics LLC. He's been with Sonics since 2003 and just recently took over ownership of the company. He serves on the EA Safety Committee, and he also serves on the General Aviation Joint Steering Committee Working Group on System Component Failure Non-Power Plan. He, uh, he was the lead organizer on the Sonic side for the Sonics One Week Wonder 2022 project that you probably saw at Air Venture last year where we built a Sonics in a week. And of course, he's an EA member. Mark, thanks for joining us today. I appreciate you coming and sharing what's new at Sonics. Yeah, thank you. Thanks again, Charlie. Um, and um, it is uh, Shable, by the way. You seem I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of choked on that. Yeah, it's all right. That. You almost <laughs> had it. <laughs> all right. So um, I'm going to keep this. Uh, I cut down my slide count from uh, Home Builders Week last year. For those of you that attended, we ran out of time for questions. Uh, so I kept it brief and uh, hopefully we'll have make sure we may we have time for questions here at the end uh, I do need to talk about some of our other webinars uh, coming up on February 7th we're doing a webinar on our new Sonics high wing design uh, you can sign up for that at eaa.org slash webinars and our most recent webinar is about uh, Rotax 912 engines and Sonics aircraft and uh, you can catch those archives uh, the video archives archives of, of that webinar uh, at eaa.org slash webinars and also at sonicsaircraft.com slash webinars. And I would encourage uh, anyone interested in Sonics, uh, seriously interested to go to the Sonics uh, webinars page and look at um, uh, many, uh, as many as you can of the of the webinar archives that are on there. There's some really good information on there, although, you know, they do get um, uh, a little bit outdated as the years go by, but some of the information in there, most of it is uh, rather evergreen. So check those out and we hope to see you on February 7th. Uh, can't start any presentation without thanking my uh, fantastic team here at Sonics. Uh, this is a, um, a group picture took, taken over the summer and we have the Sonics crew there as well as a couple of EAA staffers. We have Charlie there on left and uh, Tom uh, Tom Charpentier. Charpentier, I messed that one up just like uh, Charlie messes up Shable uh, on the right uh, there. And uh, we work with Sonics, or we, sorry, we work with EAA closely and um, that's uh, why we love being in Oshkosh. Uh, it isn't the weather, as you probably surmised if you were tuning in early and listen to Charlie and I talk about uh, the weather. So EAA is having a, a, a big anniversary this year and we're celebrating 25 years as well this year. Um, later this year, we'll have the 25th anniversary of the first flight of the Sonics in 1998 and that's when um, the first Sonics prototype uh, was flown. That's when the company was established and we started selling plans for the Sonics. Uh, we are of course founded uh, originally by John Monette and he is a Hall of Fame inductee and uh, uh, a lot of other accolades to his credit. He started out um, in the late 60s, early 70s. His first design there in the lower left, you can see the Sonarai 1, in which he first flew in 1972, uh, made the cover of Sport Aviation in uh, 1973, I believe it was, and uh, the rest was history. He started selling plans and making kits and designed a whole bunch of other aircraft. Uh, if you want to learn more about the history of Sonics and everything that came before, uh, be sure to check out uh, John Monette's biography uh, on our web store. Uh, John Monette from Sonray to Sonics. It's a good read and we'll uh, uh, bring you up to date with just about everything through the, I'd say, the early 2000s. And uh, the rest is basically in the news archives of our website. So uh, Sonics is a, um, I'll call it an umbrella. Um, Sonics LLC is the new company that I formed uh, to take over the operations of, of everything Sonics uh, a year ago uh, when, I, uh, when I became the owner of the organization. And uh, we have three major product lines. Um, the first and primary that we, you know, our 
primary thrust of our of our uh, operations and what we're really going to talk about the most today is Sonics aircraft and that is of course the kits that we sell. Uh, we also have aero conversions and uh, Sonics aerospace. So Sonics aircraft of course as I said is all the airplanes themselves and I'll go through everything pictured here. Um, aero conversions is um, uh, um, kind of our engine division, if you will. And, you know, we're unique in that we're one of um, very few kit manufacturers. I can think of uh, two others, um, being Jabiru and uh, the Exec Helicopter, that um, uh, make an aircraft kit and an engine. And maybe there's more, I just can't think of the others. So uh, our engines are um, uh, VW, air-cooled VW-derived engines um, called the Aero-V. And uh, it's been around for a long time um, in its normally aspirated uh, configuration. The Aero-V makes 80 horsepower. You can see the specs there. It's a lightweight engine relative to certified engines, especially out there. And it's taken the air-cooled VW engine that you see not just from aero conversions in the form of the Aero-V, but from other competitors of ours and people out there who just build up their own conversions. And we've really highly refined it. Uh, we're proud to say that the Aero-V is uh, probably the most actively um, developed VW conversion out there. And uh, it's, it's been brought to a, uh, a pretty good, great point of refinement. Uh, we also have the Aero-V Turbo, so a turbocharged version of the Aero-V, which makes 100 horsepower at sea level. And as I'll show you a little bit later, um, really um, um, is a great level of performance for the aircraft. Uh, we also do things like the aero injector, which is a throttle body injector. Uh, basically, it's a carburetor without being a carburetor. Uh, we actually used to call it the aero carb years ago. We changed it to the aero injector when we uh, made some changes to lighten up the body of the device. And, um, you know, the big thing was that people in Canada, especially, uh, were being required to install carb heat because we called it an aero carb. And it's not really a carburetor. It has no float bowl. And and uh, no butterfly valve, no structures to accumulate ice, so uh, it doesn't need carb heat. And it has a lot of really great uh, other attributes, and um, uh, you can learn more about that on our website. Very fuel efficient, uh, loves aerobatics, doesn't care if it's upside down, uh, all that sort of stuff. And we have a whole bunch of other accessories, uh, our own brake system, trim system, uh, throttle quadrants, um, you name it, a whole bunch of other stuff, all of that at aeroconversions.com. I should mention that both the aero injector um, and our accessories are uh, for use on any experimental aircraft, so, so not just a Sonics. And the same goes for the Aero-V, which is why Aero Conversions was spun off as a, as a different brand name. Uh, actually, originally it was a, it was a different company, uh, but we, we merged the two back together many years ago and just uh, made it a separate brand name. We didn't want to be pigeonholed into being just that Sonics engine or that thing that you use on Sonics is when it comes to the Aero Injector and the other accessories. So really any experimental aircraft We've had the aero injector on just about every type of four-stroke uh, engine you can imagine, and even some two-strokes, although I don't really recommend it because you do have the ability to lean the mixture. You don't want to obviously seize up your engine uh, by starving it of oil. And uh, lots, of, lots of applications on other aircraft for the rest of these accessories, as you can see here. Uh, Sonics Aerospace is our unmanned aircraft division, and obviously I'm not going to talk much about that today, but uh, I was actually just in Pennsylvania at our primary customer, uh, which is NASC. Uh, they're the folks that uh, take our airframes and uh, outfit them with all the electronics and, uh, and sell them to the end user customer, uh, whether that be uh, a utility company or a government entity or what have you. And um, uh, the Taros is actually that you see here is actually derived from our Xenos motor glider, which I'll show you later. It's a 46-foot wingspan aircraft, um, obviously meant to be highly efficient as a, as a motor glider, which is uh, dovetails great into the unmanned, or I should say uncrewed, um, mission. So let's talk a little bit about Sonics and the aircraft primarily here, as I, as I mentioned. Uh, you know, what makes Sonics aircraft unique? Um, there's, there's a lot of different things. Um, you know, with inflation these days, um, prices are going up. 
uh, they have for Sonics, just as they have for other kits out there. And uh, I think we're going to continue to see more of that uh, in in the marketplace with with our competitors. And uh, of course, we're doing everything we can to hold pricing under control. But uh, no no secret that inflation has been a real thing. Uh, but even even at that, we are still uh, very proud to say that um, our aircraft can be built. You know, for the cost of a of a nice new car. Now, of course, cars have gotten more expensive, um, and and so have the airplanes. But we're still cost competitive with with that sort of benchmark. And uh, the same was true um, in the 70s and 80s with uh, things like the Sonarai. It was always a mission of John to make the aircraft cost competitive uh, with buying a new car. Um, so you can see here on um, uh, an excerpt from our web page, each of our aircraft home pages has a pricing tab. And uh, under that tab, you'll see this, um, what will my project cost uh, matrix. And uh, you can see how we derive that uh, build and fly cost that we show on the website and sometimes in advertising uh, by adding everything up together. And of course, this is everything at its uh, base model. Um, you know, instruments you can see there has only got a $2,200 budget. Well, if you really want, uh, you know, the most economical build possible and still want good performance, um, we have a day VFR instrument package from MGL Avionics that's about $1,200. Um, you know, add to that things like an ELT and others, and you're you're going to be able to hit that uh, roughly $2,200 budget for uh, for what you need to be legal to fly. Uh, fuel economy uh, with and performance, of course, is a big a big advantage um, that we've marketed quite a bit through the years. A lot of that is thanks to the aero injector that I was just showing. Um, we can very much fine tune that device and great, get some great fuel burn numbers. You can see here in the chart our speed versus gallons per hour um, in an Aero V and a Sonix or YX um, at 8,000 feet. We can true out um, at about uh, well about 150 miles an hour in, ter in terms of our sort of economy cruise power setting, um, and we're burning about three and a half uh, or 3.6 gallons an hour uh, with the Jabiru 3300 in the same airplane, and in a, in a, again an economy cruise power setting, we're truing out at 170 miles an hour, burning about five gallons an hour. So that's pretty remarkable. Um, and, and and really is a is a big advantage um, in, with other aircraft out there that use more traditional like certified engines, for instance, where you're typically burning a lot more fuel uh, to get that kind of performance. Um, there's other things in terms of um, uh, just the handling and the performance of the aircraft. Uh, you can see some quotes here from journalists. Um, one of the things that Dan Johnson points pointed out years years ago is that uh, we have a four to one speed range in the aircraft. And that is, as he says, the holy grail of aircraft design. Uh, what that means is that uh, we have a very slow stall speed. Uh, but yet, as you can see from our table here, our graph, uh, we, we can also cruise uh, quite fast. Um, and uh, there's uh, Zoom Campbell there uh, talking about just uh, what a, what a a hoot the airplane is to fly, especially with some of the larger engine options like the Jabra 3300 or, or the Aero V Turbo. Um, it can be a really exhilarating airplane to fly. Now, the one thing I should mention in um, showing these numbers to you is Sport Pilot. Um, the aircraft all do still qualify or are eligible to be light sport aircraft, or I should say for Sport Pilots to be allowed to fly. They are experimental amateur build aircraft, um, not light sport aircraft, um, but a Sport Pilot can fly them because they fit within the performance and specifications and limitations. And everybody says, well, what about the speed? What about the speed limit? These look way too fast. Well, the thing that you have to realize about Sport Pilot is that it is written for um, uh, sea level standard day uh, VH crews and, and uh, under those conditions even with something like the 120 horsepower Jabber 3300 uh, we're like two miles an hour under the speed limit so uh, the aircraft are legitimately sport pilot uh, legal um, at least until you start putting some of the bigger engines in there like the 130 horsepower UL power for example uh, if you really really want to maximize the performance Hey Mark, before you leave that slide, uh, yeah, Devin asked, is that the turbo or the non-turbo Aero V? 
when you that is the non-turbo Aero-V. That's the normally aspirated Aero-V. Um, the turbo, um, if you were to go sort of apples and apples to apples here, and I actually show that in another slide later on, um, turbo you're going to be truing out about 165 miles an hour. Um, its fuel burn is going to be more similar to the Jabiru 3300. Um, one because you're making more power, but also because you're basically um, compressing the atmosphere, if you will, um, carrying sea level higher up in altitude. You can't lean the engine like you would a normally aspirated engine, and that you can't lean it as much. Another big advantage in our aircraft, something we're very proud of, is the engineering in the aircraft and the structural integrity of the aircraft. Um, we have um, very uh, wide safety margins, including an incidental margin above and beyond sort of the engineering um, uh, standard that everybody, um, most people are familiar with. We actually uh, design um, uh, an incidental margin above that uh, that we don't publish and we don't disclose. Uh, just to help keep everybody safe. These are airplanes that uh, people routinely do aerobatics in um, or, you know, even find themselves doing aerobatics uh, eventually, even if they didn't um, uh, intend that when they bought the airplane or they built the airplane. It's just uh, such an, an easy and fun airplane to fly that um, it's hard to to uh, get through a flight without doing one or two rolls. And you can see here the 1X, uh, this happens to be the 1X wing test. Um, and that was the highest load case, actually the second to highest load case, the one, the last one that, that it passed successfully. And uh, you can see, uh, you know, just how much weight we have on there. And you can see details about some of those load tests in uh, our Hornet's Nest R&D section of our website where we have some of the, um, uh, the design uh, development archives for the individual aircraft designs. The other big thing about the aircraft is just the simplicity of the construction. Um, if you look at the picture there in the far right, those are a bunch of tail cones, um, tail cone, forward fuselage, even the wings and tail surfaces, the entire airplane is basically a box with fairings. Um, so it's a square structure um, with no complex rigging, no fixtures that you have to build. As you can see here, we build fuselages on sawhorses. Um, you can see there in the background a little bit on that far right picture, uh, a wing on sawhorses uh, getting ribs and rear spar before we put it on a flat table and go ahead and skin it. Um, so, um, you know, we try to keep the construction of the airplane as simple as possible using very simple tools. You can see we have a pneumatic pop rivet gun. Um, uh, everything, all the rivets in the aircraft are uh, blind rivets, uh, primarily stainless steel. And um, the driven rivets are primarily only in the main wing spar. And uh, for most kit builders, uh, that's something that's already going to be done for you in the kit uh, that you get from us. Um, we also use um, 6061T6 aluminum, which uh, we really love using. Um, it's lower cost material, more commonly available, highly corrosion resistant is one of the big uh, advantages of it versus things like 2024. Um, there is no alclad layer in 6061 that we have to worry about scratching. So, um, you know, you don't need like a carpeted work table and to have um, protective sheets, uh, protective film on the, on the skins. Uh, you don't necessarily have to handle the skins with kit gloves. Um, <clears throat> you really want to avoid scratches if you're going to polish the airplane, of course, because um, that'll just, you know, make, make life harder for you later on when you go to polish. But otherwise, um, you know, little cosmetic surface scratches uh, that aren't deep enough to be stress risers, uh, something you can't catch a fingernail in or what have you, are no big deal. And you generally just don't have to worry about them in the airplane. So engine options, uh, as I mentioned, we have um, the Aero-V engines, uh, which is our own product. And um, so, you know, you might find we kind of slant that direction in our sales literature and in this webinar, uh, but that's for good reason. Um, you know, how we get those really great build and fly uh, costs for the builder uh, is with these engines primarily. And um, it, it's, uh, something that home builders have been doing for many, many years. Uh, these VW, these air-cooled VW engine conversions have been around a, for a long time uh, from us and some of our competitors and some companies who have come and gone. And um, it's, um, you know, kind of a, 
a, a long heritage of, of VW engines and home builds. And um, uh, the thing about it is that all the core parts for these engines are still being manufactured. So um, unlike other engines out there that come from the automotive world, uh, things like Corvairs, for instance, um, everything for the VW is still being made in this 2180cc displacement configuration, and it's for that giant aftermarket that you see out there for, um, you know, hopped up bugs and dune buggies and sand rails and even little Formula V race cars and dragsters. Um, there's a there's just a big aftermarket out there through primarily the the many catalog companies that are out there and, and websites and so everything's still being made in relatively large quantity which helps keep parts costs low and availability re relatively high and i say relatively because of course you know worldwide we're still dealing with you know post pandemic supply chain issues and that's true of course with engine parts as well as you know airframe parts and just materials in general but on average um you know the the availability of these engine parts are quite uh, quite wide and everything you see here in the disassembled engine picture that's red basically is the stuff that we make and that's what um, adapts the engine for aircraft use that we've designed and developed through the years. Uh, we also have a custom crankshaft in the engine and some other features. Um, this happens to be the Aero V Turbo that you see here laid out on the floor. Um, this is a kit. Uh, so the Aero V and the Aero V Turbo is a kit engine. We send you all of these parts, including the engine case and all the core parts um, as individual parts. And you follow our uh, assembly manual to uh, put the engine together. Uh, re relative to building an airframe kit, uh, the engine's pretty simple. Um, it's going to take you a whole lot less time. It's, uh, I would say, about a 12 to maybe 24 hour uh, man hour project um, you know in our uh, for those of us who have put engines together before um, here at the factory you know we can build an engine in a weekend um, pretty easily so um, don't get intimidated by it I would just download the manual from our website watch the video uh, that we have as well and uh, decide if it's something you want to try out but I, I would definitely encourage folks to look at it um, as a really great option uh, sort of the, um, the the second most popular option out there, and I'll say that worldwide the Sonics fleet is divided pretty much right down the middle, middle 50-50 between Aero V um, and Jabiru 3300. Um, and Jabiru is a, a fantastic option for the airplane. Um, it, it gives you that next level performance. Um, still. Uh, it's more money. Um, Jabiru's, I believe, are retailing for about twenty thousand now. But um, you know, res respective to some of the un other engines out there, especially certified engines, uh, still quite a bargain and uh, uh, really a neat engine package. We do have full support for the engine, including an installation guide, as you see here. Um, UL power engines are also an option that we've provided. And when I'm going through these options, please uh, be aware that all these engines fit in our cowling and we provide engine mounts uh, for all of these engines as, as options with our kits. So the UL Power four cylinder engines, they range from 97 to 130 horsepower, uh, four different engine options there, basically uh, two different displacements with uh, uh, two different compression ratios of, for each displacement uh, is, uh, is how that works. We're looking forward to using the UL uh, power, the 130 horsepower UL power engine on the new uh, Sonics High Wing. Um, UL power is actually working with us on that to get us an engine. And um, we're excited to, to work for that with that engine for the first time in our factory. Um, you'll notice we don't have an installation guide for it because we've never done an installation here. Um, but we've had a lot of builders through the years, even before we started making engine mounts for the UL power, do their own UL power our engine installations quite successfully and it flies the airplane uh, just great. Uh, Rotax 912 series engines is another example. Uh, we do offer engine mounts for that, including a specialized um, uh, mount kit um, for uh, basically connecting the engine to the welded mount. Um, this was the configuration that we uh, did in the One Week Wonder, as well as uh, another aircraft here in our factory that's owned by our uh, 
by our uh, shop manager. And uh, we are coming out with some more products uh, for this, including the Prop Hub extension that you see there in the picture and some other things. And um, you'll look, you, can, you can look forward to seeing those new parts and pieces on our website in the coming months, um, as well as you know, also a, an installation manual now that we've done the installation here at the factory. Uh, still a few things to refine and uh, we'll, we're, we're working on getting there. This is all the kind of stuff that's detailed in the, um, the webinar that I just showed uh, uh, the slide of in the beginning of the presentation that's archived uh, on our website and on EAA's website as well. So you can learn much more about it there. Um, some apples to apples performance comparisons here in terms of uh, what these en various engine options do in our aircraft. Um, and you know, I won't read off all the numbers to you, but you can just basically see the list there between 80 horse AeroV, uh, normally aspirated, the turbocharged AeroV, Jabber 3300, Rotex 912 at 100 horsepower and uh, UL power between 97 and 130 horsepower. So you can pretty much figure out what's going on there with the UL power bars in the graph. The blue is the 97 horsepower. The gray is the range going all the way up to 130 horsepower. Um, that is the only one where we don't have factory data for, hence the asterisk. Um, that is the performance that uh, we can derive based on the power and the propellers that they use and some of the customer data that we've gotten back from customers who have installed the engine. So we feel pretty good about those numbers. Uh, here's a really interesting slide and it's it's the installation cost of these various engines. So you can see uh, the price of the engines uh, on the far left, installation cost in the middle and the fuel burn comparison there on the right. Um, obviously, um, AeroV is the low cost leader here. Some of that is, um, you know, the advantage you get for um, doing that little extra sweat equity and building it, putting it together as a kit. Um, and some of it's just the nature of, um, of the engine and the parts availability, as I was talking about before, the very wide availability of parts. Um, the installation cost is uh, also Similarly low, uh, not a very complex installation for the AeroV or the Jabber 3300 uh, or the UL Power engines. You can see those installation costs are all right around $3,000-ish uh, as a range. Uh, Rotax, of course, a much more complex installation, and you can see uh, the price difference there. It will definitely cost you more to install that engine. Uh, fuel burn numbers, you can see there on the right, like I was talking about, the AeroV Turbo um, is going to burn fuel more like the Jabber 3300 in cruise, again, because you um, it's not normally aspirated, so you're taking, you're compressing that atmosphere and taking it up to altitude with you. Um, you can lean it a little bit, but not as much. So just going through the airframes then uh, as we go, uh, the 1X is uh, definitely what I would call our low cost leader in the, um, in, in the fleet. Um, it is, um, you know, basically everything we love about the original Sonics. Uh, just less of the things that maybe you don't need. Um, and prim primary to that is that extra seat next to you. So the 1X is a single seat airplane, um, which of course reduces your costs. You don't need necessarily as, as much horsepower to get uh, the performance, uh, to, to get um, you know the same uh, equal performance. Um, the airplane's smaller less material, and um, it even, um, with the folding wing feature on this aircraft, uh, will potentially cost you less in hangar space because you can share a hangar with somebody a little bit easier. Although I'd say that's also very easy to do in a Sonics because you can basically tuck a Sonics under the wing of a Cessna pretty easily in a, you know, in a T-hanger or what have you. Um, and, and like, I'll just go back to the specs here real quick. You can see the basic specs there on the right. Uh, G loads, like I said, you know, all of our aircraft are aerobatic. So six, positive six minus three Gs uh, when flown solo. Of course, the one X is always flown solo. Um, so you can see, see that uh, there. Um, and um, we offer all of our aircraft except for the Xenos motor glider in both tailwheel and tri-gear. And I'll also say except for the subsonics jets, which are tri-gear only, of course, this is retractable gear aircraft. So there's a little bit about the wing fold. Um, all of our aircraft have removable wings, and um, that's for you know ease of construction, working on it in your garage, getting it to the airport, 
getting it home for uh, seasonal maintenance or um, you know putting it in a trailer and taking it somewhere let's say you are a volunteer at Sun and Fun and you want to throw it in the toy hauler and uh, and take the airplane with you as you camp uh, on grounds there and be able to fly out of the airport down there in Lakeland uh, something like that you can do that with all of our airplanes um, the 1x uh, has this wing fold feature which is really popular uh, it does add some structural weight to the airplane which is why we're, we only offer it in the 1x because it's a single seat airplane so we have a little bit of useful load to spare and a very simple mechanism there to fold the wing where we're basically as you can see on the far right picture we're basically uh, moving a spring-loaded shear pin out of the way and then taking the wing lock handle and repositioning it either open or closed and uh, and that's all you got to do the um, the the ailerons hook up automatically you can see all that in pictures on our website and uh, archive webinars on our webinars page as well uh, here's a great picture of uh, the two aircraft uh, tri gear and tail dragger side by side and a nice picture of the cockpit and I will say the one X has a really roomy cockpit uh, as a single seat airplane it's a 27 inch wide fuselage um, because you know the engine is a certain width you can see even the valve covers uh, pop out of the cowling there which is kind of cool we kind of look like that look and so why why make the firewall a lot s smaller than that when the engine's already hanging out there in front as frontal area you might as well give the pilot more space and so that 27 inch cockpit width is really nice um, people are used to seeing single seat airplanes with 24 inch cockpits um, a lot of headroom in the 1x a lot of leg room in the 1x we probably fit um, more tall pilots in the 1x better than we do any of other uh, of our other aircraft and there you can see the uh, wing fold mechanism a little bit more there on the right there's the indicator on the top of the wing that is uh, one piece part of the wing fold handle that that's sticks out below the wing uh, and you can see that indication from the cockpit uh, and you can see also there the paddles uh, that the uh, aileron uh, connects with they just basically contact each other and that's what drives the ailerons then there's the Sonics, uh, Sonics B. So um, when we start getting into these airplanes, now we start talking about what we call the B models. Uh, the original Sonics uh, flown in 1998 is what we call an A model or legacy aircraft. The big difference between the two is um, the airplane is not any wider uh, than the original Sonics, um, but the forward fuselage sides are parallel to one another instead of tapering down to a smaller firewall. And um, that just makes a, a lot of difference in creature comfort, although it's hard to um, really um, communicate that with you know numbers again because the cockpit is not getting any wider in total, but as the fuselage goes forward and would typically taper down towards the smaller firewall you know in the B models you're gaining room you know even by the time you get to your shoulders to your hips uh, to your knees and your feet it just gets wider and wider and wider versus what you're used to in a legacy Sonic so that's been really popular and people really appreciate those mods and also allows us to put a little more fuel in the aircraft uh, B models have a 20 gallon tank instead of 16 gallons um, in the original uh, aircraft and and so we have B models in the Sonics the YX and the Xenos so what I'm saying what I'm telling you here about fuel and everything else is the same for all of those models in the B model configuration uh, the YXB is just basically taking a Sonics and putting that Y tail on the back. Um, why? Why not? Uh, it is just a fun airplane. Uh, we love the looks of it. Um, as you can see there, get all the attention at the pancake breakfast. Uh, that's really the, the mantra of the airplane. It performs the same. It handles the same. Um, you'll spend more time at the fuel pump on a cross country explaining the airplane to people um, uh, so maybe maybe that's not the best thing <laughs> maybe you want a conventional tail if you're trying to get somewhere and not be held up talking to people all day but uh, but it's it's just a great looking airplane we, we love that 
Y-tail configuration look. We call it a Y-tail instead of a V-tail because of that rudder you see at the bottom. It's the shape of a letter Y instead of a V, and the rudder uh, at the bottom, although very small, does make a significant difference in the handling qualities of the airplane versus a conventional V-tail. And uh, uh, the handling of the aircraft, as I mentioned, is uh, virtually the same. You have a real hard time telling the difference between a Sonics and a YX. So looking at the Sonics and the YX together is basically the same airplane, just with uh, different tails. Um, you can see again, tri-gear and uh, tailwheel configuration uh, offered. Of course, the tailwheel configuration is, um, uh, as you can see, cleaner, less drag. You're gonna get the best performance the lightest empty weight, less equipment hanging out there. Um, so you're gonna have more useful load with the tail dragger. And that's true of any kit where you have the option of tri-gear or tail wheel. There you can see what I'm talking about with the fuselage in the B model, the B model changes. The yellow trapezoid there is the original fuselage shape of the A model or legacy Sonics, uh, uh, YX and Xenos. And uh, you can see there the uh, what we did there in terms of the cockpit. We also moved, as you can see, um, the seat back cross tie in the fuselage back about two inches. So uh, that also helps you get a little bit more leg room and head room because you're actually sitting in a little bit, slightly more supine, a little bit more of a recline in the aircraft um, than the A model. There you can see the 20 gallon fuel cell. Also a lot of really great changes um, in the B model in terms of you know, having a wider area for a little bit more panel space, which everybody seems to want these days, especially with you know, modern glass panel equipment. Um, the cowling installation is actually quite a bit cleaner on the B models than it was in the A models. Uh, I think it's sleeker and better looking and, and simpler. And um, we've gone to those side exits on the cowlings primarily, which helps reduce cooling drag because we're not fighting positive pressure on the bottom of the fuselage uh, by having to have a big lip hanging out there. Uh, a lot of kit enhancements came with the, in the B model era at about 2016 as well. Uh, just making the kit uh, e much easier to put together with parts that fit together better, more masterful tooling. Uh, the first cowling that uh, John didn't carve out of a block and foam with a with a rasp uh, and, and a file uh, and sandpaper. So the cowling is just gorgeous. It's perfectly symmetrical. Um, you know, fits together really nice in the kit. It's easy to fit to the ear. Uh, we also have um, machine canopy bows and machine windshield bow. If you're familiar with some of our older, our A-model aircraft, um, those were tubular canopy bows that kind of always needed a little bit of tweaking by the builder, you know, bend it over your knee a little bit to you know, match the, the shape of the turtle deck just right. Uh, not necessarily super easy to do. These machined uh, canopy bows um, you know, obviously are, are a perfect match and uh, uh, makes for a more rigid canopy at uh, uh, approximately the same weight and, uh, and fits uh, much better. It's much easier to get a better looking installation with a lot less work. Then, of course, the Xenos B, again, all the B model features in the Xenos motor glider in its B model iteration. And um, you can see there, um, you know, it's just a Sonics. Uh, actually a YX really uh, when it comes to the tail configuration uh, with a lot more wingspan and a little bit longer tail cone again because we need more uh, moment on the tail to drive all that wing. So um, you're basically anywhere from a 40 foot wingspan to a 46 foot wingspan depending on which wingtip option you put on the airplane. It has spoilers instead of flaps. Uh, and yeah, you really need those spoilers to get you down um, because the airplane is so sleek and uh, has uh, obviously, a lot, again, a lot of wing. So you can see there the A model and the B model. Um, and uh, it's an airplane that's been gaining a lot more po popularity steadily through the years, um, which is really nice to see because obviously motor gliders are a niche. Um, a niche within the niche of home building. Um, and so not everybody wants to deal with a 46 foot wingspan or a 40 foot wingspan. Um, and, um, uh, you know, is, and is into the soaring mission, but the mission of the airplane is to self-launch, uh, cruise somewhere if you want, uh, you know, it, 
100 miles an hour or so and um, shut the engine off and go soaring. So you can uh, cruise to a location with some ridge lift or um, you know, just take a cross country to an area that you're going to vacation for the weekend that has good lift, spend the night at the B&B, &B, go out the next morning and go soaring, um, fly home at the end of the weekend. So it's a really versatile airplane. You can see there with the removable wings that I was talking about on the Xenos, of course, that's especially important. Uh, you can see there the wings being put together on the B model fuselage. Um, and, um, you know, it takes up quite a bit of space, even in our shop where we have ra rather large hangers. Um, and again, the removable wings are a great feature. The wings go together just like other sailplanes. So the Sonics, the YX, the Xenos, uh, all of the wings have uh, spars that extend past the, the wing panel itself and they overlap each other in the spar tunnel that's in the fuselage and they pin to each other and pin to the fuselage. So just like uh, the way that a lot of gliders go together. So it's a very easy uh, wing uh, removal system. Would you wanna do it every time you fly? Uh, I think for most people, of course not. That's not really the intention of the aircraft. Um, although some people, uh, you know, uh, have done it, um, but uh, really, you know, it's it's more about easy transport than anything. And saving some space while you're building. Have the wings stored off somewhere up in the rafters of your garage while you work on your firewall forward and your uh, avionics installation. Um, so you really can get it as complete as possible before you have to take it to the airport. Another uh, really popular new option for the Xenos is uh, electric propulsion. So uh, we have uh, been working with a gentleman by the name of Gabe DeVault. Um, he actually bought a Xenos uh, that was mostly complete uh, from the used market, and he retrofitted it with the Zero Motorcycle Propulsion Package. Now Gabe is one of the original um, one of the original developers of the Zero Motorcycle, and um, he um, obviously that knows a lot about it. He's had the package in other more ultralight type aircraft in the past, and he was able to develop a good power package for the Xenos. Uh, we actually sell uh, motor mounts for the Xenos to use this package, so it's actually an option right on the Xenos order form. Um, the rest of the stuff you're going to get from Gabe in terms of the reduction drive unit that you see there, um, a custom throttle quadrant unit, um, some of the support on um, uh, uh, changing uh, or I'd say updating the firmware of the ECU on the motor uh, for aircraft use and some other things. And of course, you're going to buy a motorcycle. Um, so you're going to you're going to need to buy a zero motorcycle and um, and take it apart and take the motor and the battery out of it. Uh, you know, clip off the turn signal wires and the harness and things like that. Um, but really, that's the best way to go is to buy a new bike because you know that you've got a new fresh battery that hasn't been abused. Um, Zero, of course, is a motorcycle manufacturer. Uh, they don't want to take on the liability of, uh, of um, you know, doing aircraft stuff. Um, so as you find commonly in many other places in home building, you learn real fast. You don't go to, you know, buy... Uh, bushings at Napa, uh, you don't tell them it's for an airplane. Uh, you just, you know, it's for an off-road vehicle. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, it's uh, been a very successful installation. We're looking forward to seeing more out of Gabe in terms of other power plant packages and other really cool stuff that he's been working on. Incidentally, Paul Dye from Kit Planes Magazine is doing the zero motorcycle installation in his own Xenos kit. Uh, he has an A-model Xenos kit that he's just wrapping up. In fact, I think he's uh, going through paperwork now and getting ready for airworthiness inspection. And uh, you can see articles about that build from Paul in Kit Planes Magazine. Then there's the jet. So the Subsonics has been uh, obviously a real attention getter out there in the Sonics fleet uh, through the years. Um, it is, uh, yeah, <laughs> a bit more expensive than uh, the rest of our airplanes to build and fly. Uh, but again, you know, uh, you look at it respective to other things you could build and, uh, you know, really nice new cars. And uh, it's pretty competitive. Uh, there's nowhere else you can get a jet aircraft for uh, for this cost. And uh, really, that's what it's all about. Uh, you know, owning and flying a jet is on the bucket list of a lot of pilots out there. And uh, so it's, you know, the only reason for being for the subsonics is just pure enjoyment and, um, you know, the, the thrill of smell and jet fuel and leather at the same time uh, in the airplane and um, uh, just enjoying that, that jet 
performance. Um, the Jet is sold only as a quick build kit. I'll talk about the quick build kits here a little bit later, but you know we know that most of our Jet customers are not your traditional builders, and um, and also you know we we like to be able to. Um, Keep a keep a hand on quality control at a higher level with with uh, an airplane with performance uh, like this has. You can see uh, some of the media attention has gotten through the years. Nice picture there in the lower right of Bob Carlton flying the airplane in aerobatics. Bob had flown air shows in the subsonics and one of our two factory subsonics is for several years. And um, in fact, I think he might be even doing a show again this summer in Australia with with our jet. Uh, so that'll be great to see coming back to the air show circuit at least in a limited capacity in that show in Australia yeah, and some more great pictures there air show picture on the far left from Bob um, you can see some depictions of the cockpits and pictures of the cockpits there on the uh, and uh, the engine is um, uh, made by PBS out of the Czech Republic um, it is of course the cost driver in the airplane it's a $74,000 engine currently um, and uh, but it's it's all FADEC as you can see there in the picture of the throttle quadrant and the display panel um, it, it's incredibly simple to operate um, you basically move the throttle past the detent and it starts itself up on its own uh, same for shutdown and cool down cycles uh, the ECU does everything for you and you're basically monitoring uh, percent um, RPM and your EGTs and there's a couple warning lights there for uh, oil pressure and those sorts of things. Uh, Jet of course still also has removable wings and uh, we actually sell a, a specific trailer for the Jet uh, for people doing wanting to do air shows with the airplane uh, which there are others as a guy by the name of Tom Larkin uh, who does a ton of air shows in his subsonics um, and so it's a nice package. There's a uh, a look at the quick build kit package and uh, the jet is actually offered in both an amateur built version uh, as a quick build kit as well as what we call an exhibition kit uh, uh, ultra quick build kit which is what you see here in the picture uh, in our warehouse where the tail is actually installed all the control surfaces are built it basically eliminates all the metal working from the airplane and you're left with systems installation but uh, again, because that doesn't comply quite with the 51% rule like a traditional quick build kit would, um, you know, you have to register it under the experimental exhibition category instead of experimental amateur build, which for an airplane like the subsonics is really not all that restrictive the way that you're um, realistically going to be operating the airplane. Um, a regular quick build kit would look just like this uh, picture here, except it just wouldn't have the tail on it and the control surfaces wouldn't be boxed up as finished pieces. You'd have the uh, preformed control surface stock and the ribs and you'd, you'd put it together. And then we also, um, newly in the last few years, have um, brought the Sonarai line of aircraft back into the fold. Um, the Sonarai is uh, truly the low-cost leader, and that's because it's a scratch-built airplane only. Uh, we do not sell kits for the Sonex. We just sell plans and a few parts like canopies and um, cowlings and those sorts of things. Actually, I, I, uh, I take that back. We don't currently sell the canopies. There's another third-party vendor that will provide canopies for you. Um, but uh, yeah, it is the original hand-drawn uh, drawings, and uh, and you can scratch build that airplane. Uh, you can also still scratch build the A model Sonics. Um, that's the only model of the um, the 1998 and later the Sonics line of aircraft. Um, the original Sonics is the only model that we offer for scratch building, and that's mostly because uh, we wouldn't be here to support um, all of our customers for for you know, now 25 years and going and, and counting um, at the level that we're able to support folks um, if we weren't selling kits. Uh, that's just a reality of uh, being in business. But you can still scratch build the Sonics. And I will say you can still build A model aircraft if you really want to. Uh, we do still sell all of the A model uh, kits as sub kits. Um, and, uh, and if you really just want the A model, you like it better for whatever reason, you can certainly still build that if you want. Uh, so the types of kits we have, as I talked about a little bit before, we have our complete airframe kit, which is you know, really um, one of the best ways to go because you're getting everything together in one kit, uh, one shipment, so you know, you're saving yourself quite a bit of shipping costs versus sub kits. 
and uh, you can kind of see a typical complete airframe kit laid out on the floor. You can see the uh, pallet uh, package there that it ships on. Um, the kits, all of our kits, is quick builds and the sub kit, or I should say the sub kits and the complete airframe kits, uh, ship like this where it's a pallet, uh, all of your big flat skins are actually inside the pallet between uh, two layers of wood uh, with, a, with a border around it of furring strips, uh, everything you know interleaved with uh, cardboard and, and paper. And that protects those skins really well for shipping and you know forklift moves and things like that. And then all the bulky stuff is strapped down to that pallet and boxes. You can take delivery of this kit at your house. The semi-trailer will pull up. You'll basically just cut the banding and hand unload each piece one at a time off the truck. You don't need a forklift lift or lift gate or anything like that to take delivery. Lead time right now currently is about 16 weeks as I have there in the slide. And then sub kits, um, you, just as the name implies, uh, we've broken the airframe down into you know major sub assemblies. Uh, tail kit is what you see here. That's typically what most sub kit builders start with is the, the tail kit. Uh, and then you can get a fuselage kit, wing kit, uh, and then your you know gear configuration uh, controls kits and those, those sorts of things, engine mounts, cowlings. Uh, lead times on the sub kits are between 12 and 16 weeks, depending on on the type of kit. And this is, you know, if you're looking to amortize your, your building cost over time without paying interest, uh, this is a great way to go. I will say too that newly, uh, new since uh, this past fall when we last updated pricing, uh, sub kits are um, the same price as the complete airframe kit. So in other words, if you take and, and add all the sub kits together, uh, you'll, you'll come to the complete airframe price. There's no longer a pricing advantage to getting the complete kit versus the sub kits. And then, of course, our quick build kits, as I showed you in the picture of the jet and here with the, the 1X on a truck uh, ready to ship. Um, they are um, quick build kits, as you think of them from other manufacturers as well. We build the fuselage, we build the wings, we rig the wings to the fuselage, and we even install the canopy for you because we had enough points left over in the National Kit Evaluation Team uh, audit system uh, to burn up a few more percentage points in your favor, or I should say in our favor. Uh, making the quick build kits about 48% and change complete. And those are audited. The FAA actually does come and visit, visit us on site and uh, creates documents from it that you can download from the EAA or from the FAA website and from ours uh, showing your, uh, your uh, DAR uh, that you have uh, a legal home built. And then, of course, scratch building, as I had mentioned. So some examples there, the Sonaray plans versus the Sonics plans. Uh, the Sonics plans are sort of our current standard uh, done in CAD. Um, very clear and easy to follow once you get used to the the system, if you will, um, of how to sequence the drawings. Uh, Sonaray plans. Um, uh, takes a little bit more of a hardy soul. They are the original hand-drawn drawings, and uh, you do need um, to study them. I would say a bit more. Um, and uh, you know, if you're going to be uh, welding up your own fuselage, the Sonray, of course, is a welded steel tube with fabric fuselage and metal wings. Um, so if you're going to be fabricating all that stuff on your own, you're probably uh, able to handle reading uh, those those hand drawings as well. Uh, new stuff coming up, so the Subsonics uh, JSX-2T, that's the two-seat Subsonics. We are progressing with that. Um, you can see updates about that project on our website, and you can see the URL there under our Hornet's Nest. And um, that's a two-seat side-by-side configuration, uh, the T and JSX-2T uh, being uh, for trainer, uh, whereas JSX-2 is our single-place airplane. Our, our single place jet, I should say. There at the left, you can see a picture of the prototype um, at Air Venture this year. Um, after Air Venture, um, we did make a change. Um, here's some other nice renderings of the airplane, the cockpit, and so forth. Same retractable gear system, um, actually with uh, electric actuators instead of an air powered system like the single place airplane. Um, so just a nice uh, roomy um, two seat jet 
uh, airplane to share the experience or do some training. Um, as you can see there with the picture of Paul Dye sitting in the airplane. Now Paul's not the the tallest bear in the woods, but we we have some people uh, who are really tall who tried on the airplane, and we really wanted tall people to be able to fit in the airplane, but we made that turtle deck just a little bit too tall. Even six foot four inch guys had like an excess uh, four to five inches above their head. So we actually took the time after the show to lower that turtle deck line, and we're in the process of uh, making new canopy parts to lower that, uh, just to reduce frontal area, improve airflow to the engine, while still being able to fit those six foot four inch uh, people in the airplane. Uh, so the prototype is progressing and uh, we're looking forward to flying it uh, just as soon as we can, um, you know, this spring, uh, early summer time frame. Uh, we do currently accept deposits, uh, what we call kit reservation deposits on the jet. Um, so it's basically a smaller investment that you can put down to get yourself in line. Uh, we do have some deposit holders already. So if you're interested in that, be sure to check it out on our website. Uh, hoping to ship kits for this um, right around the end of 2023, beginning of 2024. Then of course, there's the Sonics High Wing. Uh, this aircraft has generated a ton of attention. Um, it is probably the most common question I get is, you know, How's the high wing going? Uh, this is an airplane that we're incredibly excited about, not just because the wing is on top, but because we're um, making this sort of an expanded Sonics. This will fill the current legal gross weight limit for light sport aircraft of 1,320 pounds. Um, it will be able to carry more baggage. It will carry more fuel. Uh, there will be more space in the cockpit. Obviously, the uh, as you can see, the door configuration is uh, a lot like a car door. So the intent is for it to be very easy uh, to get in and out of for um, you know the aging pilot community that we keep talk, hearing about and uh, some of those new um, you know more and more disabled pilots especially you know some of the scholarships out there for disabled veterans to become pilots um, so uh, you know the airplane is going to be really accommodating it is not a bush plane as I've said before um, yes we'll do grass trips just fantastically, just like the rest of our airplanes, absolutely. But uh, this is an airplane intended to perform uh, similar to a Sonics, and it will still be aerobatic. Um, and um, you know, we hope, we hope to actually have some pretty exciting news about the, on that front um, in our February webinar here coming up in a couple of weeks. There you can see the airplane uh, with uh, uh, just a little bit more of the of the geometry of the seat and how we gain a little bit more foot room in the airplane. Obviously, we don't have a bubble canopy, so unlimited amounts more headroom in the airplane. Um, and uh, it's going to be a pretty, pretty neat aircraft that, uh, again, has been highly anticipated. There's a kind of an in-progress uh, look at the SolidWorks rendering of the airplane. And again, we have that webinar coming up on February 7th at 7 p.m. Go over to eaa.org slash webinars to sign up. Uh, there's also a posting on our homepage to uh, sign up for that webinar as well. And that's all I got, Charlie. I'll open it up for questions. Uh, did better than last year. And hopefully <laughs> now I can actually take some questions from folks. Great, Mark. Thank you for uh, presenting that information. John asks, is the aero injector available on a, for, for use on a Rotax 912 ULS? Um, yeah, I mean, we'll sell it to anybody for anything, basically. Um, we have had people install it on 912 Rotaxes. Um, our recommendation and what some people have done is to just buy one of them instead of doing a dual carb installation. And um, basically, um, you'll have to make yourself a crossover tube um, to connect the two banks of cylinders and uh, and go to that aero injector. All right, Smokey asked, you didn't uh, mention uh, L over D for or the Or buy C2 two if you want, if you really want, buy two of them. <laughs> but it'd be a lot easier uh, if you just install one. All right. So Smokey said uh, you didn't mention L over D for the Xenos, or he missed it. Um, yeah, no, sorry, I didn't mention it. Yeah, the, the Xenos uh, L over D is 24 to one. So the mission of the Xenos um, really is to be the best bang for the buck, just like all of our airplanes in its in its market space. And so as a motor glider, um, you know, we're not expecting spectacular high performance sailplane. Uh, type L over D, um, 24 to 1 is very competitive with um, other similar, you know, side-by-side -side two seat motor gliders. Um, we really like using our fixed pitch Sensenic props 
and the props for the Xenos are um, a really skinny blade profile, um, and um, they're you know basically you know climb props of course, and um, when you stop the engine, you know, we usually like to install the props so that it's horizontal across the, uh, the the cylinder, the cooling inlets when the engine's at top dead center. So that's where the engine tends to stop, and there's very little of the prop tips sticking out beyond the cowling, and it makes for a pretty pretty darn clean. Um, configuration. So that saves you the cost and complexity of a feathering or folding prop, saves you a lot of money and headache. Hi, of Jeffrey. Can, I was just going to say, of course, you can replicate higher performance soaring by just keeping the engine running a little bit, of, you know, just a bump above idle, and now you're you're getting much higher L over Ds, although I know sailplane purists just, you know, put, uh, you know, turn their nose up at that, but it works. All right, Jeffrey asks, uh, what's the estimated flight time with the electric uh, Xenos? Yeah, so if you read uh, a lot of really great articles out there about it by, from Gabe and from Paul and Kip Plains, um, basically from what I'm able to gather from, from Paul Dye is that uh, they were able to do a flight with two people, just a, a, a regular powered flight uh, for about a solid hour. And they weren't really, in that flight, they weren't really... Um, you know, soaring per se. They were just a regular powered flight and uh, they got a good hour out of it. So uh, that's pretty darn good. And then of course that lends to the Xenos's efficiency and its wingspan. Um, and it's why we only offer the option for the Xenos. The, 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 the reality of electric airplanes and you know, I won't get into the deep history, but you can see on our website that we've spent a lot of time and money developing electric motors and controllers and battery installations for pure electric flight. And unfortunately, the battery manufacturers just haven't lived up to some of the promises um, of uh, of increasing the energy density. So, you know, for um, you know, the 200-pound pack of batteries is basically the equivalent of three gallons of fuel. So that's, you know, until that situation gets better, uh, you're not going to see real practical short wing sport planes out there that are electric. Okay. All right. Dan asks, are you considering engine mounts for any of the aero momentum engines? At this time, no. We have a 200-pound firewall forward late weight limit on our aircraft, uh, which generally works out really well for us. Um, so uh, the Honda conversions are not something that we are looking at, although I know some customers have done the installation. John asks, are you developing any other turbine engines? Um... <laughs> are we developing any turbine engines? No, we're not a turbine engine manufacturer. Are we always watching the market and sometimes even talking to folks about new turbine engines? Um, of course. Okay. All right. And Frederick asks, uh, does the B model Sonic still allow the wingtip extension mod? Get a glider, a motor glider and basic cost country machine in one aircraft. No, we don't do that. Um, so probably the most famous example of that would be uh, the Europa, as many of you may recall. And, um, you know, John did that with the Moni motor glider years ago. He, he tried a short wing option on the Moni. And, you know, because you need so much more tail to drive a long wing like that, uh, what you end up with when you try to do an airplane that'll do both is a really crummy compromise between the two. So the Xenos is truly a thoroughbred in, in terms of being a motor glider versus the Sonics or the YX in being a sport plane uh, with an appropriately sized tail for the shorter wingspan. Okay, let me restate the question because I'm on the Xenos, can you still have the aerobatic tips and the 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 standard tips? The longer tips? Oh, yes, yes. We do have the aerobatic wingtip option for the Xenos. Um, the, the utility tips are required to make it a legal motor glider in terms of span loading when you have two people aboard. Um, so all the kits come with the utility tips no matter what. Um, and if you want the aerobatic tips, um, it's great, especially if you're flying solo. We call them aerobatic tips because, you know, Obviously, the longer tips, they're about three feet long a piece, uh, have more weight, and we don't want all that inertia on the wings when you're doing things like rolls with the airplane. Um, so we want you to have the shorter tips. And yes, the aerobatic tips are still available. Okay. Um, and if you have a smaller hangar door, that's 
not a bad thing. Yeah, for sure. And there's some pretty cool videos on our YouTube channel of uh, uh, kind of cakewalking a Xenos into a hangar. Um, so there's creative ways you can deal with the wingspan as well. Uh, I didn't mention it, though. In terms of the, the wingtips, yes, the wingtips attach with piano hinge. And you just pull the hinge pin on the top and the bottom of the wingtip with a pair of pliers. And you can pull that wingtip off easily. And it will go straight through a 40-foot wide hangar door with the wingtips removed, which is a, a nice uh, feature of the airplane. All right. Colin would like to know, could the B model possibly one day be scratch built? Maybe when there's a C model? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, I, honestly, it's just not on our radar. Um, one of the big considerations is that, you know, the legacy Sonics plans are many, many more pages than the B model plans. And we just haven't, you know, we have production part detail for vendors, but we it takes a long time long time to, and, and quite a bit of money in terms of people's time to um, put together a set of plans. So I, I honestly just don't see us having enough demand to go back and um, write the Xeno, you know, uh, add that much to the B model plans um, to make it a scratch built option. Um, we just don't see, you know, what we see in terms of market demand is how can we make it easier to build? How can we make less work for you? Not can we make more work for you? Although we, I know you guys are out there, um, but it just, you know, with all the things we have, we just don't have enough hours in the data uh, to prioritize that. And and as I said before, uh, it's the, the scratch built. You know, we do sell some parts. There are some parts you have to buy from us, like wing spars, uh, spar caps to scratch build. But you know, obviously that that level of activity is not what you know pays our employees and pays the bills uh, and keeps the doors open here in Sonic. So that's what we have to prioritize. All right, Lance chimes in. He says, "Thanks, Mark and Charlie. I really enjoyed helping with the one week wonder at Air Venture. The experience was near the top of my EA memory since 1966." So thank you, Lance. Man. You did a great yeah. job and really had a fun time. Okay, uh, Brian asks, are there any changes that need to be made to make the Sonics aerobatic? Or does no. that just come um, and thanks for Thanks for bringing up that question. I, I don't think I really adequately covered it. Um, so as I mentioned uh, uh, when I was talking about the 1X, I think initially is the first aircraft slide I put up. Um, the aircraft are all aerobatic when you fly them solo. And that's all it is. Um, so when you fly them at full gross weight with, uh, with two people on board, their utility category uh, load factors are approved for the airplane. So that's plus 4.4 minus 2.2 Gs. And really it's just all about the weight. Um, so, um, you know, the aircraft is structurally engineered so that at 950 pounds, it's a 6G airplane. And so it's all, it's, if you have one person in the airplane, you're fully aerobatic. If you have two people in the airplane, you're limited to the utility category uh, load factors. All right. And George asks, can the high wing, are you thinking that it can be put on floats? Hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we put the Sonics on floats actually um, years ago and uh, the Jabber 3300 powered, actually or the original SX-1, the very first Sonics to fly. Um, that airplane was 2200 Jabiru powered originally, then got upgraded to the Jabiru 3300 uh, when it came out. And we did put it on floats for a short period of time. It flew actually really great. Uh, even with all the, the big floats hanging out there, it could true out at 130 miles an hour and climb at 1,000 feet per minute. So that's definitely something that we're considering for the high wing. And actually, it's relatively straightforward. You start with a tailwheel configuration. Um, and you basically replace, you pull the gear legs out of the motor mount and you mount the float struts to that point. And then there's just a, uh, a fitting that you have basically at the joint between the forward and aft loungerons that the, uh, that the rear struts attach to for the floats. And then if they're going to be amphib floats, of course, you have to make accommodations for, um, you know, the gear retraction, hydraulics and, and things like that. And of course the water rudders, but all of that is relatively straightforward. Well, Mark, we're at that time. One closing thought before we sign off. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, buy one. Uh, it's a great airplane. Um, you know, if you really 
want to get into an airplane with, with great performance and, you know, not have a giant, gigantic financial commitment and an airplane that is easy to build. And the uh, best part of Autosonics is the way it flies. So um, I really encourage all of you, if you're here and listening, you're obviously interested. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, get in touch with us at the contact points that are on this slide here, and uh, we'd be happy to answer all of your questions and uh, help you begin your journey. All right. Well, thanks to just under 300 people that tuned in for this presentation. We appreciate it. And coming up next is Sheet Metal Basics. And then closing out tonight is Kit Selection with Paul Dye. So thanks, everybody, for joining us. And we're going to shut this one down. So if you want to attend the next one, you got to log in under that link. So and I got to make sure I Venmo uh, Paul Dye so that he can to make sure he plugs Sonics a few extra times. In that <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thanks, everybody. And hopefully you can attend an, uh, another seminar, seminar during Home Builders Week. Thanks, Mark. Yeah, thank you, Charlie. And thanks, everybody, for watching.